Um, hello and welcome everyone to another Team FRCR2B session. Today we are delighted to have Dr. Hari Baskar with us, uh, who will be the external examiner and uh, conduct the mock to be Viva practice sessions. Uh, he has a rich CV, uh, which I have shared here for everyone. At the moment, he is a consultant and head of department of radiology, Calvary Hospital, Bengaluru. A very warm welcome, Dr. Hari. I'll stop sharing and the screen is yours. Uh, Dr. Hari, can you hear me? Hello, Dr. Hari. Dr. Hari. Hello, Dr. Hari. Seems like a uh, Dr. Hari, can you uh, can you hear me? Can everyone hear me, or is it only Dr. Hari? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Uh, Dr. Hari, can you hear us? Uh, Dr. Hari, you can start. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. You are. Welcome, Dr. Hari. Welcome. Am I audible? Yes, you are, Dr. Hari. You are. Hello. Hello. We can hear uh, you, Dr. Hari. Dr. Hari, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I'm able okay. to hear. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let Perfect. us start. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, fine. Who Who's the first first one? Uh, who's taking uh, first? Yes, Dr. Rashid. I am. Hi, good evening. Okay. Hi, hi. Good evening. Yeah, Dr. Rashida. Yeah. Uh, where are you doing now? Like, where are you doing? Uh, where did you finish your training and where, where are you working now? I finished my training in Nigeria. I'm presently working in Wales as a specialty doctor. Yeah, great. Okay. Exceptional thing about Dr. Hari is that he was part of our group and he is still yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's amazing to see one of your fellows, you know, go through this phase. So he knows exactly what we lack and what we do. And we'll have an enriching session tonight for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shall we start, Dr. Rashida? Yes, please. Yeah. So this is your first case. A patient presented with chest pain, uh, chest pain after RTA. I'm yet to see the image. Okay. We can see your file names, Dr. Hari, but not, okay, it's here. Great. Yeah. Okay, so this is the chest radiograph of an adult uh, after a road traffic accident. Uh, I can see that this patient has a right clavicular fracture that is displaced. Uh, I'm looking at the ribs for any other rib fracture. I can't see any. I do not see any uh, focal lung lesion or consolidation. Uh, I also do not appreciate any pneumothorax or pleural effusion. However, yes. I can see some lucency, uh, probably deep to the pericardium. Uh, this is suspicious for a pneumopericardium. Okay. Although it's only on the right, I can see it. It's not going beyond, um, it's, not, it's not going beyond the hilum and it's not outlining the inferior part of the heart. <clears throat> okay. So, um, the cardiac size is normal. 
Yeah. Uh, so basically, the main abnormality I can see here is um, a right clavicular fracture and uh, what is suspicious for a pneumo pneumopericardium. I would want to uh, further evaluate this patient with a CT thorax with contrast. Okay. Uh, the pneumopericardium you're talking about is in the right cardiophrenic recess. Is that right? The lucency. Yes. yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's a vessel. We can ignore that. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, the hilum also appears um, quite full. Yeah. Uh, so. What are your uh, review areas in the chest X-ray, doctor? Okay, so the apices. Yeah. Uh, below the diaphragm, the retrocardiac yeah. region. Yeah. And the soft tissues. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and have you gone through them? Uh, yes. I'm okay. I'm I'm going through them again. Uh, the apices are fine. Yeah. Uh, the retrocardium. I do not see any uh, lesion behind the heart. Uh, although there is a bulge, um, which I believe should be the aortic um, outline, the descending okay. aorta, uh, okay. the I don't know, but I from the image is a bit blurry. Okay. I don't see any abnormality under the diaphragm. Okay. And being a road traffic accident with some widening at the level of the hilum, uh, I'll be suspicious for a spinal injury or a thoracic injury, uh, thoracic aortic, um, aortic injury. Yeah. So I would want to further evaluate this patient with a CT. Yeah, that's that's uh, nice. And we, we evaluated with an abdominal radiograph. I'll share with you. So this is an abdominal radiograph of the same patient. Yeah. And I don't know. Maybe it's the uh, the projection. To for me, it's a it's quite poor. I don't know. Okay. Uh, this is okay. I, I'm adjusting okay. the window. So, um, I'm looking at the bones. I do not see any fractures. Okay. Uh, the pelvic bones are quite, it's very dark, especially the, the left hilum. So I don't know if there's any abnormality. It's really dark. I can't even see the outline, the margins. I can't see them. Uh, the bowel gas pattern is, is non-specific. Uh, yeah. I do not see any evidence of um, a pneumothorax, uh, pneumoperitoneum yeah. or any bowel dilatation. Yes. So what's happening to the solid organs? I can't I can't see the outline of the solid organs as well. Yeah. Okay, you you will investigate them with, uh, investigate this patient with CT, right? Yes, please. Yeah. So what's happening? Do, do, so uh, this is the spot image of the CT um, of the thorax of this patient at the level of the heart, and I can see uh, paravertebral um, masses. Yeah. Uh, I do not see any other lesion on this spot image. So I want to evaluate the bone window to look for any. Yeah, consider bones are normal. The bones are normal, so yeah, and I do not see any extravasation of contrast from the aorta. So this may be um, an incidental finding, not related to trauma. Yes. Uh, so this could uh, represent um, uh, differentials of this masses could be extra medullary hematopoiesis. Okay. So I would want to um, ask uh, the clinician of any hematological disorders in this patients no so no that, yeah it's a new like uh, patient came to the hospital for the first time okay, after so rta so i want to further evaluate i would request for correlation with okay this is a spot image of the abdomen and i can see that this patient has um 
splenomegaly. Yeah. And uh, uh, the liver is also slightly enlarged. Yeah. Outside that, um, I do not see any other abnormality on this image. Can so you appreciate? Going, yeah, we're going back to chest X-ray. Can yeah. you appreciate? Yeah. So looking at the image again, I think there is some diffuse sclerosis of the bones. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if everything putting together. So this uh, this could represent um, a case of uh, it's, uh, it's diffuse sclerosis with splenomegaly and uh, hematop um, extramedullary hematopoiesis. Differentials of this could be thalassemia. Uh, this could also be. I'm not sure if you we should see extramedullary hematopoiesis in myelofibrosis as this can also present with sclerosis of the bones with splenomegaly. Yes. Uh, this could also be a case of sickle cell disease. Uh, yeah. So I would want to ev evaluate this patient in those lines. Yeah, so fine. So next patient. History of fall followed by breathlessness. Okay, so this is a chest radiograph of an adult uh, with history of fall following breathlessness. So I can see that this patient has had a previous stenotomy. Yes. And uh, I, the, I'm trying to look for any evidence of um, prosthetic heart valves, but I cannot see them through this um, image. It's quite, it's quite white. Uh, the lungs, I do not see. Okay, now? I still I still really can't see. I don't know if there is any prosthetic valve in this patient. I'm, I can't see it on this image. I'm okay. Uh, I do not see any focal lung lesion or consolidation. Uh, looking at the, the, there's no pleural effusion. Yes. So I'm looking at the bones to look for any evidence of fracture. Yeah. Uh, I don't, uh, can you adjust the window again for me, please? Fine. Okay, uh, I can't see any displaced rib fractures. Uh, the clavicles and, okay, uh, there, there is um, a dislocation of the right acromoclavicular joint. Yes. Uh, I do not see any other bony abnormality. So I would inform the referring clinician of my findings and a uh, patient will need orthopedic referral. Yeah, you will not take a uh, shoulder radiograph for that to confirm that? Uh, yeah, a dedicated shoulder radiograph can be done. But I think it's, yeah. quite, it's quite obvious on the chest radiograph. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. So this, this patient uh, presented with uh, uh, painful eye movements and uh, left a sixth nerve palsy. Okay. Uh, I'll give you a sh uh, control if you want. Okay. You can scroll whatever the images according to your convenience and... Uh, okay. Can you request uh, that? Yeah. Yes, I'll request for control now. Yes. Oh no. But normally uh I think I I've gone to another sequence. Yeah. Can you please take me back? Yeah, fine. Which one? Okay, that. I think this is it. This is the one you gave me. So I'm trying yeah. to use the arrow keys. Yeah. But it's it's not working again. Okay, it's quite slow. Okay, so these are uh, uh, T2 uh, sequence, um, XL MR of this patient. Yeah. Uh, at the okay, so I'm trying. Uh, to... It's a normal T2 or a some something different? No, uh, it's a um, I think it's a cyst sequence. Yeah, yeah correct. So, um, scrolling through to 
to look for any obvious abnormality. So I am looking at the, uh, this is the level of the Meckel's cave and I do not see any abnormality. Yes. Uh, as I'm going down, uh, this, I uh, can, the cerebropentine angle appears normal. Yes. The, the vestibular cochlear nerves normally, bilaterally. Okay, I can see this high point. Okay, I can see this hyper intensity uh, in the region of the right cavernous sinus. Uh, so this could be. Sinus is not normal. It's normal, okay. Yeah. Uh, do you want to go to some other, like if you're not finding any? Yeah, I can't see anything yet on this yeah. sequence. So do, do uh, as per your clinical practice normally, like whichever the sequence you first go after yeah. that, you'll. Yeah. I would like to go to the T2 first or flare, flare. Flare, you want flare? Yes, please. Yeah, excuse me. Can I take the control? I'll show yes, give please. you the flare. Yeah, yeah. This is a flash flash sequence. So uh, I'm yet to see any abnormality. The cerebral hemispheres appear normal. I do not see any abnormal intensities in the deep white matter. Yes. Uh, So, uh, if you're not seeing any abnormality in the brain and what are the review areas for CT as well as MRI brain, did, did you uh, do you remember the history I have given? Some... Yeah, you said sixth nerve palsy. And one more that one more. Uh, can you remind me, please? Yeah, painful eye movement. Painful eye movement. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. I didn't get that. Yeah. So I I would want to look at the orbits. Yeah. Okay. So I'm looking at the orbits and okay, the medial rectus on the left. Oh my God, what's happening? Okay, my screen is misbehaving. Okay, the medial rectus on the left appears swollen. Yes. And it's the, the swelling is involving the body and extends up to the insertion. Yes. And the other muscles appear normal. The optic nerve appears normal. Okay. So uh, I'll be suspicious for a pseudotumor in this patient. Yes. Uh, although the surrounding fat appears clean, I do not see any fat stranding. Okay. So I'm suspicious for a pseudotumor. Okay. So sequences are there. You can ask Sorry. whatever it. So some more sequences are there. Like we have acquired all the sequences. You Is want there anything? Post contrast, please. Post contrast. Which plane you want? Excel. Okay. Dr. Hari, we would make this the last case. Because yeah, the fine, fine. Okay, so okay. yeah, I can see some enhancement. Yeah, I can see some enhancement of the muscle. Okay. Uh, so I think this is an inflammatory process, probably a pseudotumor. Okay. So it's, is it only involving the muscle or any other thing is happening? Do you want to confirm with any other plane? Uh. I think it's which which plane is best for orbits. Sorry. If you want to assess any orbital disease, mm. which plane is better? Coronal. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, are you having the still oh, yeah fine okay yeah i don't want control in now yeah you, no no i'm not touching anything oh okay so i can see that um, enhancing media rectus yes uh Okay, at, at this level, it's extending into the surrounding fat, and I think it's also affecting the optic nerve. Yes. At this level. Yes. So there is some um, neuritis as well, optic yes. neuritis. Yes. So I would inform the referring clinician, and this patient would need to be reviewed by the ophthalmologist, um, as well as the... Uh, Mm. Yeah, it's, the patient will need to be discussed in the relevant MDT. Yeah, mostly neuro ophthalmologist. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, how do you think you have done? Like <laughs> this last case, I, I I'm sure I did woefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like uh, you should have review areas. The exams examiners yeah. will. Yeah, in 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 exams you usually get these kind of cases only. You will be uh, searching for some hyper high signal intensity in flat T2. You will not get anything. Finally, you have to look for your review areas and uh, you have to answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you did well. Like uh, you almost uh, give uh, given answers to all the cases. Uh, like, but I've 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 taken uh, I've stored you seven cases. But uh, within the 15 minutes of time, we could complete only three cases. Don't worry. Cases or uh, numbers, it, it doesn't matter actually. How you perform the case, that is what is important. Mm. Yeah, you, you have done well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Any, any chats, any questions for me? Yeah. Yes, guys, if you want to ask any questions, I would op be opening the chat at the end of the hot seats. Uh, but if there are no questions, we'll go to the next candidate. Uh, somebody, uh, uh, can you see the chat, Dr. Hari? Or should yeah, I it's, it's not tolosa hunt. Cavernous sinus is normal. Only orbital pseudotumor, which is having a myositic form as well as perineuritic form. You can, you can see the enhancement of the optic nerve sheath. And also some subtle high signal intensity in the optic now. So it is also neuritic as well as perineuritic involvement and orbital fat is involved and uh, that medial rectus is mainly involved. Some part of the mm, inferior rectus is also involved. So uh, we have referred to the neurologist here. Uh, is that suffice? Like I'm not texting. No, no, no. It, it, it's fine. It's excellent. Doctor, uh, there is another question. What was the diagnosis of second radiograph of scapula? I think it's the acromioclavicular dislocation. Yeah, right AC joint dislocation. You should always look for that in a, a chest radiograph. Like it, it, it will be very useful for your rapids. Yeah, IgG4 related. Yeah, uh, this uh, optic, uh, uh, this... Um, Orbital pseudo tumor is, I, 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 uh, in fact, it is uh, associated with IgG4. We have to evaluate. You can tell that, like, first case diagnosis, uh, it's a sickle cell anemia. Uh, the first time the patient actually presented, uh, came to the hospital after RTA. He is having a, uh, he was having a, a right clavicular fracture. After that, yeah, right clavicular fracture. Uh, then uh, some some signs of uh, extra medullary hematopoiesis and uh, left upper quadrant some mass is there you can see on the chest x ray if you closely watch there is uh, uh, like um, the stomach bubble is medially displaced some homogeneous high density uh, okay. are you able to see my screen again like the x ray radiograph yes we can yeah 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 this this this, this uh, pointed us towards taking the uh, abdominal radiograph and uh, i couldn't get the full ct and full um, ct of chest and abdomen so uh, so this was finally to be a proven case of sickle cell anemia yeah you can discuss extra medullary hematopoiesis thalassemia all this thing yeah any other questions um i think no i think you have covered all the cases uh, somebody has asked, can RR come as viva case? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. anything, anything. Anything, <laughs> yes. Anything, anything, yeah. <laughs> True. Uh, I think, uh, which grade open the Google? <laughs> Let's learn the viva tricks right now. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, the one with splenomegaly, yes, Dr. Hari has already told, it, it's a diagnosed case of, of sickle cell, but of course we can give DD. Um, yeah, myelofibrosis is, is a DD, but you'll get more sclerosed of uh, bones. Bones will be more sclerosed. It's it's a little bit, uh, yeah, you can give us a DD. I, I will not say no. I think we can move to the next case, Dr. Yeah, Dr. yeah. Dr. yeah, yeah. you are next. Yeah. Yes, hello. Uh, hello, hi, Dr. Seth. How are you doing? Hi, Dr. Hari. I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. How yeah. are you? Yeah, I'm fine. <clears throat> so the case is for you. Okay, thank you. So will you be able to see the uh, radiograph? Yes, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Adult patient with chest discomfort. So this is the frontal chest radiograph. Uh, of an adult patient who has presented with uh, chest discomfort. I uh, can see the heart size appears within normal limits and uh, the striking abnormality is in the right load zone where I can see there is hazy uh, opacification. Yes. Uh, so, uh, which is not uh, obscuring the underlying uh, pulmonary vessels, which yes. look fine. Yeah. And other than that, I don't find any other uh, focal uh, lesion inside the chest and the hilum are normal. Yes. And both CP angles are clear. And looking at behind the heart, I don't find any obvious abnormality there and looking at the bones no obvious bony lesion is identified so uh, uh, I, uh, this abnormality this is hazy opacification I uh, would like to uh, know or uh, confirm with like uh, since I am suspicious about whether it can be in the breast or right-sided breast, or so, so I would reconfirm this uh, uh, after examining the patient or uh, if the patient is available, or uh, I would like to uh, examine the breast and uh, communicate my findings to the referring clinician. And so what is happening to the right heart border? The, uh, the right heart border, uh, I can see that uh, there is some haziness. Uh, uh, it's, not, it's not well defined. It's yes. uh, inferiorly. The yes. inferior part I can identify. So the second thing, uh, uh, it can be uh, a, a consolidation, which is uh, involving the right uh, Lord, uh, right middle lobe, as uh, I can see the uh, right type from uh, is showing normal outline. Yes. So these are my two, two differentials. Uh, so uh, how would uh, you proceed further? So we can proceed with the CT chest. Or uh, so uh, yeah. So we have taken a lateral view. So the lateral view is showing uh, this is. Uh, uh, right middle lobe collapse as uh, it is uh, confirmed uh, my findings of right middle lobe involvement. So uh, this can be a consolidation or collapse involving the right middle lobe. So, so which one is which, which one uh, is it a consolidation or a collapse? It's, it's a collapse. It's a collapse uh, so, which is yeah. involving the right middle lobe. It is typical of uh, a shape opacity uh, in the middle uh, mediastinum. So uh, I will uh, uh, further, uh, I will uh, proceed uh, with the CT chest uh, to look what for, for any, sorry? Why, why, why do you want a CT chest? You have a diagnosis. Yeah, we, we have the diagnosis, but uh, I mean, uh, the first thing uh, uh, as per uh, our assessment is, is to, go for uh, and communicate the findings to the referring clinician and then uh, in, we can repeat the chest x-ray in four six uh, weeks time and see if it is resolved and 
then CT chest can be performed later if required. Okay, we'll move to the next case. So this, you can request the control. This patient actually uh, diagnosed uh, uh, of having an uh, adnexal cyst and uh, came with abdominal discomfort. And uh, uh, sorry, um... uh, do you want me to show the images or you want to take the control? Yeah, I am requesting the control. Yeah. Yeah, you can feel free to, uh, like, we have all the uh, sections there. You can feel free to take whatever the sections, whatever the images you want. So uh, this scan, no. nothing okay. much is there. This patient outside USG, right at nexal cyst and uh, some vague abdominal discomfort. Right at nexal cyst and vague uh, abdominal yeah. discomfort. Yeah. So... This is the CT abdomen axial images, non-contrast, examination. Okay, so going through the images, I can see uh, there is an abnormality in the right right next, which is which is a cystic uh, mixed attenuation abnormality in both extra, uh, larger on the right side, uh, okay. which is uh, showing some internal fat attenuation and calcifications. Uh, are you That's sure on. about fat attenuation? So if, if in case of doubt, what would you do? I would like to measure the attenuation. Okay. And uh, So consider there is no fat attenuation. So uh, considering there is no fat attenuation, uh, there are some calcified densities in the pelvis. I believe these are flaboli. Yes. And um, going back, the uterus is showing some calcification or possible, yeah, some calcifications are seen in, inside the uterus. Yes. And I'm going back to view so I can see there is an abnormal loop of power in this uh, segment, uh, which appears uh, quite uh, suspicious. And there is some fat standing. So I've So it, it appears to be like an area of uh, bowel invagination into the bowel, like into susception. But uh, I would like to confirm with uh, my findings on coronal plane, if possible. And uh, like we, we have acquired some other sequence, arterial venous and delay. We can okay. go, through, go through that and... Uh... and Go through the arterial face images. Yeah. So I'm um uh, concentrating on this part of the bowel, which uh, looks suspicious, and it is showing some enhancement on post contrast images. 
and uh, there is associated fat standing. Yes. And this is a mid dilated loop, I would say, but I don't find any significant mesenteric uh, lymph nodes which are enlarged, uh, okay. no paraortic lymph tenopathy. Uh, are you sure it's an ileal loop? Uh, I'm, I'm, I would like to reconfirm my findings uh, while scrolling down again. <clears throat> so kidneys uh, are fine, bilateral extradinal you know, pelvis are there and no adrenal nodule. So uh, this is this is the area uh, of uh, concern which uh, 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 which I am uh, talking about. So uh, this looks suspicious to me. So you so excuse uh, just a, can I take you want coronal yeah. say yeah yeah okay so. We can see it on the coronal images. So uh, on the coronal images, I can see this is uh, this is this uh, area which we are uh, seeing. This can you identify the loop, whether it's a small bowl or large bowl? I'm just trying to trace it backward and. And uh, it, uh, I think this is a large bubble. It's not yes. small bubble. So, uh, this so it's is a sigmoid a, loop, right? It's a sigmoid loop. Yes. Uh, which looks suspicious and uh, it needs uh, referral to the GI team for further evaluation. It can be a possible tumor, uh, but I don't see any evidence of uh, proximal bowel dilatation. Or I would like to uh, see, look for any uh, free air uh, by changing the window to uh, long windows to look yes. for any free air. And then I don't find any evidence of bowel. Uh, so okay. uh, this is a focal segment of the bowel. So, uh, so you, uh, what would you do? You will refer to the GA team. GA team, uh, yeah. And yeah, okay. 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 So NACU baby, one day old infant. A one day old infant. Uh, I, I can see there is uh, I can't see the uh, humeral uh, ossification center, which uh, is suspicious that this can be a premature baby, uh, but uh, this is uh, the striking abnormality is uh, in the in the upper neck. Uh, there is a, a leucentia, which is uh, uh, which I believe is the uh, air within the isaw feathers, and. Uh, I'm trying to look for NG tube, whether it is there or not. I can see the uh, air is seen in the rest of the bowel, in the abdomen, uh, and uh, so uh, with and the heart size appears normal, no focal lung collapse or consolidation. Yes, and there's some crazy haziness in the right lung. Uh, so. Uh, my uh, top differential for this appearance is uh, uh, esophageal atresia is a possibility. 
uh, with this uh, appearance and I complete like, esophageal atresia sorry complete esophageal atresia esophageal atresia with distal esophageal fistula with, as we can see uh, air is uh, present inside the bowel uh, so uh, so i would like to confirm my findings uh, whether a correlate with if the patient had uh, ng2 which was not possible to intubate and then uh, yeah so it needs to be uh, communicated to the pediatric team urgently yeah and uh, do you search for anything uh, so uh, it, since it has associations with vector anomaly so i would like to uh, appropriately i would like to roll out uh, any cardiac anomalies and um, uh, and uh, other vertebral uh, anomalies uh, do you see any of them i am looking for i'm counting the ribs and uh, So Harry, we think... can make this the last case. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. So the ribs uh, look fine. Uh, that and that, I am looking for any vertebral segmentation defects. Or so, what is the catheter there in the thorax projected over the superior aspect of the thorax on the left side? What is that sorry, tube? Uh, sorry, I I can't uh, see. Yeah, I can I can see that now. So, uh, on the left side of the uh, tube, is this the PICC line, which is in yes, place? yes, and then. I can see the endotracheal tube is seen in C2 as well. Okay. Or, yeah. Are you sure it's an endotracheal tube? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, no, this is a. It appears to be NG tube, but yeah, which is being uh, pulled out. So, have you heard of some other tube for esophageal atresia? Yeah, we uh, replicable. Yeah, Riplogal tube, tube. Yeah, Riplogal. this is what the Riplogal tube in the upper uh, esophageal pouch, right. okay. which is yeah. distended with air. You can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it quite okay. distended, right? Right. And right. the line you are seeing is the PICC. PICC or... line. So, is it yeah. normal for a PICC to go like that? No, it's it's not normal. It is. Uh, it should be. Uh, I believe it is it a left sided SVC, is it? Yeah. Uh, uh, because it is going uh, on the left side. And so, where does it end? And it is ending into the. Uh, oh, so I believe could it be a patent for a man oval, which is. No, uh, what is the drainage of left sided SVC? It, it it ends in the coronary sinus, right? So this this is also associated with, co with some cardiac anomalies. So this is uh, upper esophageal atresia and distal tracheoesophageal fistula, some cardiac anomalies. You have to think right, in okay. the lines of vector spectrum. Okay. 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 Good. And uh, in this, like uh, you were a little bit late to pick up the finding, and you were not able to identify the uh, mm, uh, origin. Like uh, the lesion, where where does it arise from? And of course, you also miss the liver myths. Can you see I here? Too much busy looking at that. And... Yeah, yeah. It happens quite commonly <laughs> in exams. Yeah, but yeah. you should not repeat the mistakes. If you miss yeah, this thing, you. then they'll think like uh, you, you're you not safe kind of. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other one is like... Yeah, this one you have to still investigate because it's not a consolidation. There is no role of antibiotic in this. This okay. is a collapse. It's a collapse, right? So uh, some hazy opacity in the right middle zone, obscuring the uh, right cardiac border lower aspect. 
so okay. both can be it can be because in right middle lobe collapse you will not get any signs of volume loss so you have to consider both middle lobe consolidation as well as collapse once you see the lateral it is collapse means you have to investigate further for underlying cause in an adult patient yeah right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah you've done well sir thank, thank you. you next would you like to go over the chat yeah uh, it's there so many questions are there uh, some yes yeah replogels tube yeah repl they already answered replogels tube yeah you have to consider both in differential diagnosis and if you see anything abnormal bone you have to mention like i am seeing this the right cardiac battery is obscured but it is not pushed to the uh, back or pushed to the i am not uh, i am uh, at least i am clearly seeing the upper right cardiac border so it's not a chest uh, chest wall abnormality so it's obscuring the heart so it has to be somewhere in the right mid zone and uh, so uh, it could be a consolidation or it could be a collapse so for that i need to investigate with CT and particularly for adult patient, even if you have the lateral and you have the diagnosis, you have to know the cause for the collapse. So uh, that's why you have to go for CT. Yeah, it doesn't look dense because it's it's opposed to the chest wall, very close to that, and both the fissures uh, come contract each other and becomes close to each other. That's why it will be a ill-defined in the frontal projection, but it will be a short projection on the lateral radiograph. Any other questions? Uh, no, not yet. Dr. Hari, uh, uh, maybe Dr. Sanit has some technical issues. I'll go next. Okay. Bahad. Okay. Yeah. It's a young, uh, young patient with elbow trauma. Okay. So uh, this is the AP uh, radiograph of the elbow of a young uh, patient with unfused skeleton. Um, I can see that, um, I'm, I can see the ossification centers and by the criteria of crito, um, I'm wondering that I can see the ossification center at the uh, site of the lateral epicondyle, um, uh, but not at the medial epicondyle, which is not in the chronological order. So I have two suspicions. First of all, uh, the uh, that I cannot see the medial ossification center, so there might be avulsion. Plus, the lateral epicondyle seems to be a bit distant from the uh, parent humeral bone. So I think this is a case of uh, uh, ossification center avulsion fracture. And this patient, uh, I would like to see the lateral to see the raised anterior and posterior fat pads, or if there is a concomitant supracondylar fracture, and the patient will be referred to orthopedics. Yes, I can see that there is a raised uh, anterior fat pad. Um, I cannot see a posterior fat pad. Uh, 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 I can see now a halo uh, behind the um, posterior after the humerus. So the posterior fat pad is also there. And um, so there is definitely effusion. I'm trying to see that uh, the, the, uh, ossific the bone fragment Overlying the ulnar aspect might be the avulsed uh, medial epicondyle ossification center. Nevertheless, I would uh, um, concur with the orthopedic on call, and this uh, child needs to be referred for uh, man uh, management of the fracture. Yeah, good. I forgot to start the timer. I'm putting 14 minutes now. Yeah. Patient okay. presented with breathlessness. Okay. So this is the chest radiograph of a skeletally mature patient who has presented with breathlessness. Um, in the first instance, what I can see is that there is um, airspace shadowing, uh, especially in the right lung field. I can also see opacification and haziness in the left hemithorax. Um, there seems to be... Um, a soft tissue density, especially on the lateral aspect of the left hemithorax, which is forming um, an incomplete border sign, indicating that there is an extra pulmonary uh, in origin. The, uh, the left scapula is actually not as well delineated as the right. 
um, the uh, the bones itself appear to have a mottled appearance. Um, the uh, I believe this is an if this is an AP film, then I'm also suspicious for uh, pleural effusion because the base uh, seems hazy. Um, Which side? Uh, the left side, sorry. Okay. Um, so um, in this patient with shortness of breath um, and with the, these morphological features, I'm more inclined to go towards uh, an aggressive or malignant process. I think there is a neoplastic lesion uh, originate. This uh, one cause could be that there is a neoplastic lesion arising from the scapula, a bony destructive lesion, with uh, metastases in the lung and osseous metastases and a malignant pleural fusion. Um, the other uh, possibility could be uh, that I cannot see the left breast shadow. So uh, the the other possibility could be that this patient has a, a left breast carcinoma with osseous and uh, pulmonary metastases. I would ask, discuss with the clinician and ask for the previous um, for comparison. And uh, after discussion with the clinician, I can go ahead with a contrast enhanced CT chest if required for further evaluation in this patient. This patient would need referral to an oncology MDT for management. Yes, the patient had um, radiotherapy, radiotherapy two weeks. Yeah, sorry, uh, it's like, is it echoing? Yeah, I can hear you, sir. Okay, radiotherapy. This After that, he developed some swelling. Uh, okay, so this patient uh, had radiotherapy two weeks back. After which he developed. So, uh, uh, in retrospect, now I can see that there seems to be soft tissue swelling in the left upper limb, which means that this patient might be developing the complication of lymph edema. Um, which is uh, which is one of the scenarios which can happen post um, mastectomy and uh, radiation. Um, radiation pneumonitis um, is a possibility, but I don't see a very clear cut uh, clear uh, cut uh, demarcation area of the area. Um, okay. So I think this is all uh, the scenario of uh, a breast mass neoplastic lesion and treatment and uh, management uh, complications. Yeah. So uh, you can request the control. Yes. Sir. I have requested. Yeah. Okay. Adult patient presented with abdominal distension. So this is a scout film. Uh, scout CT film of an adult patient who has presented with abdominal pain. Um, in the in the scanogram, I can see uh, some uh, prominent bowel loops in the center of the abdomen. Um, I believe I should start with to, abdomen. With, Better, but, but yeah, with plain this one. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this uh, seems to be a CT chest. Oh, CT chest and abdomen. So yes. now I'm scrolling uh, from the chest downwards. Um, I can see that there is an NG tube. Um, I'll have a look on the images once first. The patient presented to us with abdominal pain. Distension. Distension, sorry. Okay. So I can see the NG tube going into the stomach and curling within. Um, the stomach appears to be a bit distended, although the, the stomach has not been, um, um, you know, distended with water or uh, positive contrast but still I find that there is some thickening and uh, some lack of distensibility within the proximal part of the stomach as um, compared to the lower part. And there seems to be again thickening in the um, antral part. Um, going down, I can see that there is distension of the bowel loops and there seems to be some hyperdense foci within these bowel loops, if I may go to the, uh, apologies to the gallbladder region. Okay, the gallbladder is there. There is no uh, surgery. Um, 
okay, um, I'm going down. So this is uh, clear, uh, one positive finding which I'm sure about is that there are distended, dilated small bowel loops. So now I would be looking for the cause of the dilated bowel loop, which could be mechanical, which could be ischemic, and um, it could be due to paralytic ileus as well. I would proceed with the arterial phase. Yes. Okay, so going to the arterial phase. Now I'll be closely looking at the arteries, uh, the celiac, uh, okay, the celiac origin. Okay, so it seems that, yeah, the celiac and the SMA origin are close by, but they are well opacified. I'm going down and the inferior mesenteric artery, uh, the, no, there seems to be some, yeah. So you can ignore the arteries, some arteries, arterial, yes. arterial variation is there. Some left yes. gastric is directly arising from iota and yes. common hepatic is directly arising from the iota. Okay. Um, okay. I believe, uh, although I'll go to the venous phase as well, but I believe there is a transition point here um, in the ileal loops. Um, okay. um, I'm trying to look if there is any swirling um, of the vessels or the mesenteric fat here. Uh, but as far as in the arterial phase is concerned, I can see only one transition point up till this area. Uh, I'll go down. Ah, there is further abnormal thickening in the lower pelvic loops. Okay, yes. and there seems to be, uh, I'm trying to look for any air foci in the non-dependent part of the bowel wall. Uh, up till now, I'm seeing it close to the um, anti-dependent part, like it's rising. Uh, may I go to the venous part? Please. So now going to the venous area, I'll be in the venous phase, I'll be looking very closely to the portal venous system, as well as I'm trying to look at the um, enhancement of the bowel wall. Again, I'm not very happy with the stomach. Uh, I, uh, perhaps it's due to the lack, uh, because we haven't given any oral Yeah, contact. it's because of the lack of distensibility. You can ignore, ignore the stomach. Okay, okay, I'm ignoring it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, now coming to the dilated bowel loops, um, I'm trying to compare, the, the bowel wall is enhancing, but I'm trying to compare the enhancement with the adjoining bowel loops. Uh, okay, now this is, I'm trying to discern if this is the colon. Yes, it seems to be, where is the colon? Um, no, this all seems to be, if I may, I'll try to trace the large bubble because I, I, till now, I believe that this is all small bubble loops, but for a moment, I have my suspicion that if the large bubble loop is also involved or not. Uh, if I'm following it correctly, there seems to be a, an area of narrowing here which would correspond to the large bowel actually. So uh, the, now I'm thinking on the lines, if this patient has multiple areas of structuring, um, I would inquire the physician if this patient has previous history of total colectomy and um, you know, um, then no surgery. Lastly, no surgery done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'll help you. Just yes. a second. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I have left the mouse. Yeah. Okay. Are you comfortable now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I'm, I have been given the coronal images now. I'll start tracing from the rectum. Okay. So coming to the term, okay, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, consider that, that part as like, it's not, spasm. That, yeah, kind of, it's, okay. it's not abnormal. 
Okay. It's an acute angulation kind of sigmoid is again curving back and going back. Okay. So then I would, um, I think I would again uh, concentrate at the small bubble loops, this area of thickening and yes. the surrounding stranding. And okay. it seems to be quite a long segment and there yes, seems sir. to be a lot of surrounding fat stranding. Okay. Um, um, I'm thinking in the lines that because this is such a long segment of affected bowel loops, whether this is inflammatory, um, uh, either Crohn's disease, or is it neoplastic in nature, uh, by uh, meaning that this is uh, um, adenocarcinoma of the bowel. I would not put lymphoma because lymphoma usually is an aneurysmal dilatation and there is lack of uh, significant bowel dilatation. So at point I have, I'll put inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease as the prime possibility. Ulcerative colitis less likely because that involves the whole colon and uh, neoplastic like malignant adenocarcinoma. Um, I would uh, refer this patient to the GI slash surgery and this patient would need evaluation for uh, further evaluation and MR enterography can be done if required by the clinician. Otherwise it's a GI slash surgery uh, MDT case. Okay. I'll close some of my images. Oh, sorry. No. Yeah. Okay. So this is the frontal chest radiograph of a skeletally mature patient. Um, so um, in the first go, I can see that the lung fields are clear. I do not see any hyalur or mediastinal abnormality and the rib cage in the first go looks okay. But when I look at the retrocardic area, um, there seems to be an area of um, elongated gas filled uh, area uh, behind the heart, um, uh, which, does not, which is not starting from the mid, uh, superior mediastinum down to the uh, gastroesophageal junction, but because it is gas filled, um, I would be suspecting in an osophageal pathology. And I would look at the previous x-ray and discuss with the clinician regarding the uh, uh, past history, whether this patient is suffering from any esophageal pathology or not. And uh, if the clinician- Patient is having some amount of dysphagia. Okay, so then, uh, then my next um, radio, uh, radiological investigation would be a barium swallow or a contrast swallow. Okay. Okay, so this is a spot image from a barium solo, um, which shows a proximal esophageal dilatation and a sort of uh, extrinsic compression on the mid part of the esophagus. Um, there also seems to be some um, mucosal irregularity um, in the anterior aspect of the lower esophagus. Um, I'm not happy with the mucosal lining, especially in the mid esophagus. And um, although it is extrinsic, but I would be concerned whether there is um, a nodal mass which is compressing the esophagus or uh, there is a malignant pathology of the esophagus uh, itself per se, which is leading to, to the patient's symptoms. The patient would be referred to the GI for an endoscopy and for a histopathological diagnosis. And to endoscopy assess. shows an extrinsic compression. Mucosa okay. appears normal. Mucosa appears normal. If the mucosa is appearing normal, uh, this means uh, in retrospect, this is not an aggressive pathology. Then I would put leomyoma as a prime differential, which is causing an extrinsic compression without any mucosal distortion in this esophagus. Um, if required, a CT would help in the diagnosing the condition. Um, Spot image CT. Okay. So um, this is a spot image, uh, which demonstrates a fluid density lesion in the esophagus, a low density lesion in the region of the esophagus. 
Um, I do not see any calcification per se. So this could be an esophageal uh, duplication cyst, which is causing compression on the esophagus, or a mediastinal bronchogenic cyst, which is causing extrinsic compression on the esophagus. Okay. What would you do? Um, I would uh, refer the patient to for MRI. Uh, so uh, this is a sagittal T2 MRI, uh, which is showing actually a fluid fluid level. Yes. And uh, so the fluid uh, with hyper intense level above and a hyper intense level below. Um, so this is T2 hyper intense. Um, I would keep uh, an infected bronchogenic cyst or, or, a, an inf or a duplication cyst as a possibility. Okay. Only infection? Any other condition can produce uh, like this? I'm trying to think if I would like to see a T1 if this is fat. Um, and I'm trying to discern what osophageal pathology, uh, mediastinal. So something is hypo on T2, which is layering down and which is bright on T2, which is layering up. So it could be a blood, uh, you know, a blood uh, level. Um, yeah. So it's a esophageal duplication cyst, with, which, uh, which has yeah. complicated by infection as well as internal bleed. Uh, okay. Yeah, you can say okay. that. Yeah. I passed time. my time actually, Doctor Hari. Okay. When I was uh, yes. Yeah, this one. Um, yeah, this is the patient presented with. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll just close. Okay, I think I'll open like this. So this patient had a history of contact with tuberculosis. And if oh. you see the lungs and all, it's bilateral apical scarring. And if yes. you're go, going through this, you could have mentioned this thing. Like I see some calcific foci here. True. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Some calcific. This is a pulmonary tuberculosis. And if you see classically in Vino, coronal, this this view. Yes. So what it is described, it's, it's a pulled up cecum. Cecum has gone up. True. This is the narrowed ileocecal junction. And it yes. is a continuous wall thickening of the ileum, ileum loop. That is the distal ileal loop, as well as it is involving the cecum and ascending colon. So uh, immediately we referred to the uh, surgical team and uh, uh, they operated. Uh -huh. So so this was the operated specimen. It, it looks like a, some polypoidal swelling and neoplastic. Uh -huh. So the uh, surgical team came back and said that it is a tumor. That's why we have gone for hemi, right hemicolectomy. Uh -huh. And this is the path report. So it came as tuberculosis. Granulomatous lymphadenatus tuberculosis. Cachating granuloma. Can you see? Yes, we can. Yeah, yes. yeah. Wow. It's, it's a tuberculosis. Acute intestinal obstruction due to tuberculosis. Yeah. And uh, this case, ruthlessness, you have done well. Like, yeah, sorry. So this is a case of uh, breast cancer, uh, left mastectomy, and the consolidation and uh, uh, almost near complete opacification of left amethorax. So we have to always look for mastectomy. Uh, yes. You initially missed, then finally <laughs> yes. you found her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So as Dr. Amdad says, no, always <laughs> describe the breast first. True. So yeah, malignant effusion and also these nodules and all like it's a, a metastasis in the lungs only and also maybe some rotation so this is lymphedema secondary to mastectomy they will also go go for a modified radical uh, dissection and axillary lymph node clearance so it could be due to surgery also radiation also so this okay. is the thing and first first what is the case like you did well uh, on that also elbow trauma like it was a case of avulsion of medial epicondyle right yeah yes. okay. yeah thank you so much dr hari it thank you thank excellent you. cases um, yeah I think Dr. Sayan will go next. Oh, okay. Hi, hi. Hi, hi sir. Sayan. How are you doing? Hi, yeah, I'm fine, sir. How are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Young female. 
it, it, yeah, I'm sorry, like I've exceeded. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Young female with cough, I guess. Cough, yeah. Okay. I'm provided with the uh, frontal chest radiograph of a skeletally mature young female patient with bilateral best shadows. I can see that there is an evidence of dextrocardia since the marking is on the other contralateral side and the cardiac shadow is principally pointing towards the other side. So in the case of dextrocardia, I'll be suspicious for ruling out any bronchiectatic changes. So the lower zones look a bit hazy. So I'd like to reconfirm whether there is any bronchiectasis. In that case, I'll be thinking of the possibility of Cartagena's syndrome. I'll inform the findings to the physician, suggest uh, correlation with clinical findings, and suggest a CT if necessary for confirmation of diagnosis and discuss at the chest MDT. Okay. I am provided with uh, screening mammogram. Yes, yeah, screening mammo, uh, the cranial caudal projection where the bilateral breast shadows are seen. I can see there are multiple uh, linear specks of calcification which are seen extending from the uh, bile ductios from the central part towards the periphery, which appear to be linearly arranged in a segmental fashion. These uh, ca calcific pattern uh, uh, appear to be rod shaped with uh, 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 rod shaped with clear margins, something of the possibility of uh, plasma cell mastitis. I, in my usual practice, I like to uh, see the cranial, the medial lateral oblique view also uh, to see for any other pathology. Um, both breast shadows look almost identical and predominantly fatty in composition. I'm trying to see for any suspicious nodule. I am not able to visualize any clear cut definite uh, uh, suspicious lesion in this image. There is some amount of density which is seen in the uh, right breast in the retroarial region, but it appears to be the nipple shadow. So I'd like to reconfirm this on ultrasound. Otherwise, I'll, like, I'll put this as uh, M2 pattern of calcification and uh, suggest ultrasound correlation. Uh, to see for any uh, to see for any additional findings, there is no nephrinopathy seen in the axillary folds as well. Uh, there is no particular lesion that I can see in this image. Uh, few tiny specks of glandular tissue are there. Uh, this uh, so uh, since there is a, a, a kind of segmental distribution, so I like to just see the. Uh, let like to reconfirm on the ultrasound image. There is a focal soft tissue thickening sort of which is present in the pectoralis major on the right side towards the inferior level, just below in the inframammary region. So I, I like to investigate that further to see if there is any suspicious soft tissue swelling in that region. Inform the findings to the clinician, such as ultrasound correlation. And if there is any ultrasound lesion which is suspicious, I like to do a sampling from there. Okay. Abdominal provide, pain. Okay. Provide with frontal radiograph of the abdomen of slightly mature adult patient who's come with abdominal pain. Uh, in my first uh, survey of the image, I can see there is no obvious gross dilatation of the bowel loops. Uh, the background bones appear to be normal. There is uh, uh, no evidence of any uh, pneumoperitoneum seen in the given image as such. Uh, there are some focal uh, loops of bowel which are present in the central part of the abdomen, uh, giving the impression of small bowel loops. Uh, that though there, uh, there is a slight amount of increased density which is seen in the central part of the abdomen which is causing slight displacement of the properitoneal fat stripe on either side. And the renal shadows are not seen very clearly. 
uh, along with the psoas outline. So I'm thinking, is, is there a possibility of a retroperitoneal pathology in this patient? Uh, since I'm not able to visualize the renal shadows very clearly. So in my usual practice, I like to correlate to the clinical history and suggest a CT if necessary for further evaluation of the patient. And depending on the finding of the CT, we can take this case forward. Acute lower abdomen pain. Lower abdomen pain. So I'm investigating the lower abdomen for any features of any cause of the pain. I'm not able to see any calculus uh, or any uh, uh, evidence of uh, any appendicolith as such in this in, in this image. Uh, there is uh, no obvious fracture seen as well. So I'm still thinking of the possibility of a, either a bowel or retroperitoneal pathology on this film. Okay, what would you do? I'll do a CT scan for further confirmation of my finding before taking this case forward. CT, you want remote control? Yeah. Okay, as I'm scrolling down, I can see, okay, the renal shadows are normal. There is, there is some prominence of the bowel loop seen. There is a large distended loop seen in the right iliac fossa region, which is uh, uh, at the ileocecal junction, along with there is, uh, along with the hyperdense focus seen in the terminal part, uh, corroborating with the possible point of this uh, appendix. So I'm thinking of the possibility of an appendicitis with surrounding inflammatory changes. Uh, I'll just go through the portal phase once. So in the portal phase, but in the portal venous phase rather, there is some definite fast training seen in the right iliac fossa region in the region of the appendix with uh, uh, possible calculus in that region. So I'm thinking of the possibility of acute appendicitis. In my usual practice, I like to inform the findings to the, uh, 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 to, the uh, to the surgeon and suggest that there is a possibility of acute appendicitis in this patient and the patient probably needs a uh, uh, uh need, needs to be taken to the theater depending on the severity of his findings now won't you say whether it is perforated not perforated yeah uh, so look for pneumoperitoneum is, yes yes i look for pneumoperitoneum which is not seen in this given name and which is not seen and at the same time there is definite amount of fast training seen surrounding the uh, appendix. So, though there is no clear-cut evidence of perforation, I think there is definite amount of uh, uh, quite a lot of acute inflammatory changes present, which suggests that the patient may be heading towards a perforation and is very acutely symptomatic. Okay. So, are you sure that it's not perforated? I'm trying to see for any evidence of uh, perforation. There are some uh, few focal uh, stripes of air are seen and there are walls appear to be thin. So at this point, I feel there is a possibility of perforation in this. So how, how will you confirm that? Uh, whether it is perforated or not. Yeah. Do you, I can, I you can do go to, yeah, I can take the lung window and see if there is any evidence of air. Okay. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'll just tell the clinician that there may be evidence of perforation and it's better to do an exploratory laparotomy to rule it out. Okay. Okay, I'm um, right. It's a child presenting with leg weakness. I'm presented with the frontal radiograph of the lumbar dors dorsal lumbar spine in a child presenting with leg weakness. I can see that there is a calcification seen in the left hypochondriac region, which suggests that the possibility of a, a focal calcification probably in the near the splenic region. Apart from that, the uh, vertebrae appear to be slightly high, uh, inc show slight increased density. So I'm thinking of the possibility of any vascular cause, maybe a sickle cell disease, which is complicated by a shrunken spleen. So I like to correlate my findings on the lateral view to see if there is any altered density of the vertebrae. Um, 
Yeah, on the lateral view also, there is definite sclerotic changes seen with the calcified focus. Um, the possibility, one first possibility is a sickle cell disease going with this appearance. I like to correlate with the history and see if the patient is a known case of sickle cell anemia. Other possibilities can obviously be that of, uh, though less likely, that of lymphoma or myelofibrosis, though usually those show splenic enlargement instead of calcification. I'll inform the findings to the clinician, such as correlation, clinical correlation and discussion of the hemat MDT. This patient is not a known sickle cell uh, disease patient. In that case, I like to go for hemoglobin electrophoresis to see for any uh, uh, in, to see for any hematological uh, uh, manifestations. Apart from that, obviously the other DDS will remain the same as in myelofibrosis or lymphoma, and uh, will correlate clinically. Yeah. Productive. Cough with headache. I'm provided yes. with. Am I going to? Scroll yeah, you can screen? control. Yeah, you can scroll. Yeah, okay. I'm provided with actual CT scan images in the lung window. I can see a focal train bud opacities present predominantly in the right lung with some areas of focal conglomeration extending involving the upper, middle, and the lower lobes. Uh, so I like to go to the next set of image. Okay, there is an evidence of cavitation seen in the uh, right lung along with uh, uh, the strain word opacity. So these features are more likely to be that of infection. So I'm thinking of the possibility of a lung infection with strain bud opacities and uh, uh, focal changes. Uh, the patient has, had a, has been covered with the abdomen as well. So in the abdomen uh, gross, there are multiple collateral seen in the abdomen involving the subcutaneous muscle as well as the uh, involving the muscular anterior musculature so there may be an underlying vascular uh, vascular manifestation as well in this patient so so uh, yeah okay so there is thickening present around the vascular margins along with train but changes Let's just see the lung window. So there is cavitation, train bud nodules with vasculitis. So I'm thinking of the possibility of a vasculitis like a vaginous granulomatosis also. Along with that, the other possibility can be that of infective changes, though it is unilateral, which is unlike an infection, but I still like to give infection as one possibility with septic emboli as well. In my usual practice, I like to correlate with the clinical history of the patient. See if the patient is, is patient. not septic, not febrile. Not febrile. So I think more of the possibility of a, a more of the possibility of a vasculitis rather than infection. So in that ESR case, not raised. ESR is also not raised. Not very much raised. You can say he's well. He's having infection, productive cough, tuberculosis. Okay. So how could you explain the uh, abdominal collaterals? How yeah, could you explain a symptom of hypertension? So I, he can have an added, uh, uh, like a super, like a, a background of vasculitis, which is with a compound. Do you see any wall thickening? Vessel wall thickening? Not significant, but there is a mediastinal soft tissue, which is there. Okay. No uh, Thin no patient, there. he's having tuberculosis, some infection, chest infection. Yes. So, uh, the vasculitis, uh, to explain the vasculitis with tuberculosis, we have to see, uh, otherwise the patient may be having some cause like a, a aortic, there is a soft, subtle soft, there is a subtle narrowing at the level of the descending aorta. So there may be a co-optation in this, yeah, there is definite narrowing of the abdominal aorta as well, which again becomes re-expanded. Re Something of the possibility of a co-optation of the abdominal aorta, which has resulted in multiple collateral formation yeah. Or maybe that is why he's having the collateral. So you inform the cardiothoracic uh, team as well to okay. see for that and uh, undertake necessary investigations. Okay. CT first. Yeah. I'm provided with the CT images of a patient who's with enlarging head. Yeah. I can see there is definite hydrocephalus seen in this patient. There is dilatation 
of the lateral ventricles along with the fluid field density seen at the level of the interhemispheric fissure. I'm trying to see for any cause of the obstruction. The fourth ventricle is uh, appears to be uh, uh, not seen very clearly. Uh, the, the corpus callosum also appears to be hazy, uh, I mean indistinct. So I'm thinking of the inter, uh, interhemispheric cyst along with uh, hydrocephalus, uh, with the corpus callosal agenesis probably, and at the same time, there is uh, uh, no obvious evidence of any lesion at the level of the fourth ventricle. So I'm thinking that this cyst, which may be an interventricular arachnoid cyst, has caused secondary compression, uh, but still I like to see, confirm whether this is a cyst and do a contrast study or an MRI uh, before proceeding further to see how this appears uh, on the other sequences or post contrast. MRI and, is there. Okay. Can I take this flare image somehow? I'm like, okay. yeah, that's a diffusion. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was checking the wrong one. So flare image is taken, which shows that there is a, uh, the, the hydrocephalus is there. It appears to be completely cystic and suppressed on the flare sequence, which suggests a CSF intensity. So this, the two possibilities can be either a arachnoid cyst or an epidermoid cyst. I like to see the diffusion for any evidence of restriction. There is no restriction seen. Uh, uh, is there a contrast or these are all the images? Yeah, you can scroll down. So a lot of images are there. Okay, okay, okay. I think uh, we have not done contrast. Okay, no problem. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so I'll just take the SAS then. Okay, so there is a large cystic lesion uh, at the level of the fourth ventricle. Uh, outlet of the third window, the fourth ventricle. Uh, Are you sure? Part. Like level is right. Fourth ventricle, I can clearly see the fourth. Yeah, ventricle. yeah. I mean to say, not at the fourth ventricle. It is just like in the posterior part of the third ventricle, which is op causing obstruction of the uh, aqueduct of Sylvius. Okay. So I'm thinking of a, a, a periaqueductal cystic lesion with yeah. secondary hydrocephalus resulting in thinning of the corpus callosum and dilatation of the proximal ventricles. I will okay. inform the finding to the neurosurgical team since there is hydrocephalus, it needs decompression. And okay. at the same time, uh, suggest uh, further workup of the patient. To, what is uh, the further workup? Actually, if it is uh, indeed a arachnoid cyst, then maybe we can suggest a deroofing of the cyst uh, or okay. marsupialization, I'm not sure. And okay. then post procedure we can image the patient to see for resolution yeah you want to see some other sequence what are the differentials you said you are arachnoid cyst yeah one is arachnoid cyst other possibility can be epidermoid but there is no restriction in this image okay uh, and then a pure cystic lesion at this level uh, is unlikely to be doesn't look like a does not look like a trap ventricle uh, because it is distinct from the ventricle. Okay. Not sure if there is any other differential. Okay, this fine. Point. Fine. Yeah. Uh, are we done or uh, can yes. I show? Yeah, yes. okay. Yes, time, yeah, yeah. So uh, this is really a difficult case. Like a uh, differential would be an arachnoid cyst. And uh, have you heard of something called... Uh, Kevum vile interpositi. Ha ha, kevum vile interpositi. Yeah. But does it yeah. become this much large? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a cyst of kevum vilum interpositum. Vile interpositum. Okay. 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 Because it's not extending anteriorly, it's okay. somewhat anterior apex is triangular. Okay. And if you see at this level, like it's not obstructing the foramen of Munro. See? Both yeah, yeah, foramen of Munro is open. Yeah, so yeah. there is like a uh, description is like it, it should not go beyond the foramen of Munro and the yes. apex should be a little bit triangular. This is yes. cyst of Kevum Velum interposit. Yeah. Okay. 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 Otherwise the management part and all fine. Okay. And uh, this one uh, known patient known case of tuberculosis, but um, mm -hmm. I don't know for, for some other reasons. Yeah. How to like 
like uh, make it go up like sorry yeah if you see the mpr mm -hmm. so this is a case of uh, mid aortic syndrome mid aortic syndrome okay yeah coarctation ah, of yes. abdominal aorta you can see the narrowing and uh, post stenotic mm -hmm. dilatation okay okay yeah it's a case of uh, mid aortic syndrome that's why that uh, like it's a natural bypass from the proximal yes. aortic circulation to the distal to the legs mm -hmm. that's why yes, you yes. get multiple collaterals okay yes yes so you need to in, uh, refer this to the interventional radiology uh, okay. Okay. okay yeah and this one like um, i'm sorry yeah this one yeah you miss the mass here totally there is some increased density okay. the bowel loops are dis uh, displaced downwards and it so okay. shows a stipple decalcification and okay. it's a young young child mass with stipple okay. decalcification and you see some sclerotic density some with bone blastoma okay yeah it's a neuroblastoma you have to investigate for that okay so okay. you went to the myelofibrosis and sickle cell anemia mm -hmm. okay yeah you okay. have to investigate with CECT or MRI to look for intraforaminal intracanalicular extension mm -hmm. and uh, like urinary levels of that like okay, any okay. and also nuclear scan uh -huh. to form okay. mm -hmm. yeah then uh, yeah uh, I think elderly was just a discomfort we missed uh, yeah this one we have seen in this yeah, this one, some appendicolate you missed here. I, I'm, I'm still cannot see. Yeah, this. you said you said it's there is no appendicolate, <laughs> and this is the surgical specimen. Yes, yes. So, so it's a gangrenous appendicitis. Okay, okay. So they they went for it. It's almost nearly perforating. Mm. So you can okay. see the gangrenous changes in the appendix. Okay. So it's a it's outside purulent collection, zero size congested, everything. Okay. 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 And uh, this one screening mammogram, you like it? It is a case of pla. It's an ant mini. You won't get in uh, Viva definitely. Uh -huh. It will yes, be yes. googly. Yeah, yes, it's a yes. plasma cell. And other one yes. is you. You were right to pick up. You have always you look at the side markings. Yes. Yes. Yeah the like whenever you start interpreting look mm -hmm. at the side marking so there are yes. some cystic loosencies particularly in the lower yes. lobes this yes. is uh, dextrocardia you you forget to mention situs inverses situs inverses you, right. yeah you you only mentioning about dextrocardia, dextrocardia and cystic right, loosencies right. yeah this is a case of cartagena yes, yes yeah yeah you yeah uh, performed well okay. and dr okay. saniji is available or uh, uh will uh, not yet i will take dr adil will take his place um okay he's there as a backup uh, there are some questions in the chat if you dr Hari, if you would kindly have a look. yeah yeah fine like uh, from where where should i see <laughs> okay uh let me go uh, okay somebody suggested that pineal cyst and quadrigeminal cystern cyst yeah 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 is. yeah i i i i in initially with ct i uh, thought of a pineal original but but in mri the pineal was pineal gland was compressed and displaced downwards so that's why like uh, a pineal cyst is a good differential uh, intraventricular arachnoid cyst is a good differential and uh, like but like uh, even like uh, when i was interpreting this image initially i thought these are all my differentials then i went back and referred to finally i could diagnose this came from uh, it was excellent case yeah uh, yeah Somebody has asked, was this the abdominal extra finding in perforation case? I think it's the appendicitis case in which you showed. Uh, yeah, appendicitis. It's not perforated yet, but uh, like it, it was a phlebolith and uh, it was totally conjected, uh, congested. Sorry. Uh, like if you see this, I think this is the one. So we had a hard time. This 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 thing is the uh, uh, appendix. The walls are quite edematous and undulating, right. and it is totally filled with uh, fecolith and uh, severe periappendicial fat stranding. Yes. Yeah. So it was a gangrenous appendicitis, uh, although it was not perforated. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, somebody has asked about the previous case, which I had breast shadow absent, that the scapula had metastases. I think you told that no. it's lymphedema. 
elephedema because of the increased soft tissue density we are not able to appreciate the bone details and the projection is not good so we can ignore that the scapula is nothing is there in the scapula okay and what was the finding in the esophageal duplication cyst case on the chest x ray ah uh, yeah yeah i wanted to discuss but i forgot right yeah that is it yeah so actually there is abnormal convexity or increased density in the subcranial region you have to right. say that right and uh, yeah chest fullness yeah can you see now yes we can yeah so if you see increased density projected in the subcranial region and abnormal convexity you can say right sided convexity of asaigo esophageal line Yes. So right. yeah, that is the description you have to give, and no differential densities. So some splaying of carina also you can say. So it is some splaying and increased density, uh, abnormal right-sided convexity of acetoesophageal line. So you have to suspect some mass in that region. Whether it could be a cystic or solid lesion. So so after that you have to proceed with CT and like that. Okay. Ah, uh, somebody saying, can you show the findings in the abdominal coarctation, please? Okay. I think I've closed that one. So angio, like so, first, first, if the patient is hypertensive, uh, you can see some ectasia of ascending aorta. Yes. and uh, left ventricular muscular hypertrophy so at this young age so it's all evident of uh, hypertension and if you see that epigastric vessels superior epigastric vessels and internal mammary everything is becoming prominent if you see that this vessel is coming till the end of here see you can't see this vessel it's uh, it's communicating with the inferior epigastric again the inferior epigastric is coming and like see it's coming down yes. lot of collaterals are there till the yes. femoral can True. you see that yeah yes, it's a, it's a, it's like a bypass natural bypass True. yeah and if you scroll down in the axial plane sudden sudden narrowing can you see that yes we can yeah sudden narrowing of abdominal aorta abrupt in fact it is a diffuse as well as abrupt caliber change of abdominal aorta and multiple vessels so they they might ask you the associations like he said vasculitis is one of the association and neurofibromatosis all these things you have to you will be you should be able to say that and finally this patient goes to interventional radiology therapy right dr hari yeah any thank you thank you I think yeah. Neil can go next if you if you are okay with it. Yeah, yeah, fine, fine. Like uh, there is no time limit, no, for the videos, like for Zoom to continue. No, no, no. Doctor Neil can do his fifteen minutes, I guess. Yeah. Then I'll show the Sanich cases. Yeah. Yes. You are, Doctor Hari. You are so well known and popular amongst the Indian candidates. I was filled with messages. <laughs> we have to give viva to sir hari i said wait for your turn i said no problem <laughs> really i don't know <laughs> so dr anil was one of them he kept bugging me all the time dr anil oh, the screen okay. is yours now <laughs> yeah hi thank you hi yeah hi yeah this the uh, frontal chest radiograph of a neonate uh, i am going systematically uh, can, can you me? like uh, yeah you are a little bit feeble yeah can you hear me sir now yeah 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 this is the frontal chest radiograph of a neonate uh, i am going systematically i am going through the lines and tubes the ng tube uh, is normal in position the uh, endotracheal tube is normal in position the uh, uh, umbilical artery catheter is at the level of t10 uh, and the umbilical venous catheter uh, i can see another catheter coming down from the down Uh, most probably in the uh, hepatic region that is mal position that needs to be uh, 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 repositioned so the most striking abnormality is uh, under the domes of diaphragm where i can see a large lucency uh, in the right upper quadrant and also in the epigastrium with the uh, uh, lining of the falciform ligament so this is a case of uh, um, this is a case of pneumoperitoneum 
So uh, in in my routine practice, I uh, immediately pick up the phone and inform the uh, neonatalist or pediatrician who is looking after the case, as this is an emergency. Uh, this needs to be considered for uh, therapy. Apart from that, I can see diffuse hazy uh, opacity in the bilateral lung zones. Uh, uh, if uh, if this the baby is uh, uh, pre premature, uh, preterm. I suspect this to be uh, a respiratory distress syndrome because of lack of suspect uh, surfactant, and I can also suspect uh, if the pre uh, baby is premature, there there might be possibility of necrotizing enterocolitis in the uh, in the abdomen. Uh, so in my routine practice, I would also advise to get an abdominal radiograph uh, to get a radiograph including the abdomen. Yeah, uh, I can see again the umbilical venous catheter is uh, not appropriately positioned. It is in the liver that has to be repositioned. Umbilical artery catheter is normal. The, again, the pneumoperitoneum is noted. I can see uh, uh, prominent small bolus with uh, intramural air. That is the pneumatosis intestinalis. So this is a case of uh, uh, necrotizing enterocolitis in a premature child. So I convey my findings to the referring physician. Uh, like to discuss the case regarding uh, appropriate management of the same. So how urgently, how uh, in what way you will communicate these findings? Yeah, I will pick up the phone and immediately inform the findings. Okay, the, that should be, uh, it's a surgical emergency, immediately you have to, yes. okay. Yeah, okay. CT first. Yes. Uh, can I scroll or? Uh... Yeah, yeah, uh, you, you ask for a request. Yes, sir. Uh, these are the axial uh, images of CT brain in brain window in a patient presenting with ataxia. Uh, I can see uh, the normal uh, gray white differentiation of the uh, brain parenchyma. Mm, uh, no no uh, white matter or any mass lesion, uh, any significant abnormality. Uh, the cerebellar hemispheres appear normal. Uh, I can see some hyperdensity in the uh, uh, basilar artery level. Uh, apart from that, uh, I am not seeing any uh, significant abnormality to suggest the patient patient's symptoms of ataxia. So yes. in my routine practice, uh, I uh, uh, discuss a case with the referring physician regarding the uh, onset and uh, uh, clinical... Uh, it's a progressive onset, onset of ataxia. Okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, Somewhere in the middle-aged male. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I, again, I'm going through the uh, images. I'm not able to find any significant abnormalities to suggest the uh, uh, nature of uh, his uh, clinical symptoms. So, uh, yeah, in my routine practice, uh, yeah, I discuss a case with the referring physician and like to take the case further by uh, doing an uh, MRI brain uh, for further... Uh, evaluation. So you are examining a CT of a brain. So you have yes. seen in the brain window. Yes, sir. So do you like to see in some other window? Yes, sir. Uh, I am. Uh, I am provided with the bone window also. Yeah. Uh, I am going through the uh, cardiocranial level. Progressive ataxia. It's it's a real case, like. Okay. History and all, it's very uh, real. Okay. Uh, again, I am seeing the calvarial bones uh, in the normal limit. I am mm. going through the skull base uh, at this level. Yeah, I can see some widening of the vitreous apex in the left on the left side uh, with uh, uh, some irregularity of the foramen lacerum. Yeah, you are still uh, you are still at the foramina level. You are not at the petrus level. Petrus is a little bit above, right? Yes, yes, sir, yes. Sir, here. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir, okay, uh, you are not finding any abnormality. Yes, sir. Okay. So, how will you proceed further? Yeah, I will like to take the case further by uh, doing an MRI brain. Yeah, feel free to go through the sequence. Sure. Yeah, uh, you'll start with the diffusion sequence. In the diffusion, I am not able to appreciate any uh, acute pathology. The flare. 
yeah now i can see the abnormality along the right uh, cp angle where i can see well defined extra axial ice cream cone lesion in the right cp angle with this tip going into the right uh, iac internal auditory canal so this is a case of uh, uh, vestibular schwannoma right side vestibular schwannoma so this uh, explains its symptoms of uh, ataxia so in my routine practice i would like to go through the any synchronous lesion so i am not seeing any uh, anything so left side cp angle appears normal uh, if the contrast is done i would like to go through the same yeah it's done yes sir uh, one second yes sir this these are the contrast enhanced images yeah i can see the lesion is very well intensely enhancing with the non enhancing internal areas so uh, yeah this is the case of uh, right acoustic schwannoma acoustic neuroma so i am not seeing any other synchronous lesion so if synchronous lesion like uh, meningioma or bilateral acoustic schwannoma or ependymoma are seen i will consider uh, uh, nf2 but this is a isolated case of uh, uh, right uh, vestibular schwannoma i can see hypo dense uh, hypo intense non enhancing uh, filling defect in the right sigmoid sinus it's an arterial phase no it just okay, the blood is coming to the venous side okay, okay. Uh, you should see the proper sequences for proper diagnosis okay okay yes sir uh, in my routine practice i would like to discuss a case in uh, neurosurgical mdt for further management of the case yeah good yeah okay yeah, i'm sorry i'm closing some of my so pre employment workup yes sir uh, this is the pre employment workup of a uh, skeletally mature patient's uh, chest x ray chest radiograph i can see abnormality involving the right uh, humeral shaft uh, where very well uh, narrow based means the wide based abnormality in the cortical abnormality involving the right uh, uh, medial aspect of the right humerus apart from that the chest uh, uh, the lung fields appear normal the cardiac shadow is normal the vertebra are normal so in my routine uh, with this findings i su suspect this to be a case of uh, uh, sacile osteochondroma uh, in my routine practice i would like to go through the uh, previous images of the uh, patient if any and also like to do uh, a skeletal survey to see uh, any synchronous lesions i can also see similar lesion in the left side uh, but it is not covered in the given uh, image so i suspect this to be a case of uh, diaphyseal achalasia if the if the lesions are multiple so i would like to discuss a case with the referring physician and also uh, like to take the case in orthopedic mdt for further management okay okay Yeah, this is the patient presenting with headache and uh, running nose. Uh, yeah, I think uh, CT first. Okay. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, and these are the axial brain window and bone window images of the patient. Can uh, can you uh, put your mic closer because yeah, yeah. audio is feeble? Yeah, can you hear me, sir? Now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is the uh, lady presenting with headache and running nose. Uh, and these are the images of uh, brain in brain window and bone window i am going systematically cardiocranially mm, normal gray white differentiation of the brain parenchyma is noted no mass lesion or any midline shift uh, i can see some hyperdensity in the uh, cellular region uh, yeah uh, i would like to see the bone window yes uh, yeah some sinusitis is noted in the bilateral ethmoid sinuses uh, i would like to see the cella uh, cella is not widened i, I can see a lesion uh, here uh, in my routine practice uh, i would like to know the uh, uh, i would like to convey the findings for referring vision I'd like to know the clinical history in detail uh, for uh, uh, for pituitary uh, uh, abnormality apart from the rest of the parenchyma and the bones appear normal uh, if the if my uh, if the su uh, suspected findings are there then like to take the case further uh, with uh, a contrast enhanced mri 
Uh, the so patient uh, presented with headache only, but yeah. I uh, the clinician presented a typical history of uh, suddenly she developed with some kind of PCOS like appearance. She had a babies and now she is becoming polycystic ovary. Uh, like uh, her pelvic USC gave a polycystic ovarian morphology kind of. This yeah. this is what the clinician talked to me and clinician given the history. Okay, yeah. With this uh, history, I suspect the lesion to be in the pituitary, anterior pituitary, mostly uh, yeah. hyper function. A nodule, a micro okay. nodule, micro adenoma. Okay. So in my routine practice, I would like to take the case. So, what is your CT diagnosis? A hypertense lesion uh, with, uh, uh, in the cella without any cellular expansion. So, I suspect this to be a case of pituitary micro adenoma. Micro adenoma. Okay, fine. So, you will investigate with MRI? MRI, uh, pituitary, especially focus on pituitary with dynamic contrast and study. Yeah, MRI is there. You feel free. Yes, 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 yes sir. Uh, can I see the uh, plane? Okay. Yeah, you, you just scroll upwards. Uh, you'll get all the sequences. Okay. Yeah, I would like to see the plane. Uh, plane T1 Sag. This is contrast. Uh, yeah, I can see uh, the pituitary, the anteropituitary gland appears mildly bulky. The posteropituitary gland appears normal. Rest of the hypothalamic and optic chiasma structures are normal. Okay. So in the coronal sections, I can see mild uh, bulge on the left side, left top of the anteropituitary gland. So I suspect okay. lesion to be on the left side. In the dynamic contrast study, yeah, I can see the lesion in the midline. Uh, this is the non-enhancing lesion uh, related to the uh, rest of the enhancing component, enhancing pituitary gland. So sequentially, as I go sequentially, uh, the lesion is evident, more marked on the delayed uh, images. So this is a hypo-enhancing or non-enhancing lesion in a background of normal enhancing anterior So I suspect this to be a case of um, pituitary microadenoma. In my routine practice, I would measure the size of the lesion. So most probably this is less than one centimeter. So uh, my findings on the CT are confirmed. So this uh, I would like to discuss the case and the findings with the referring patient. Like to take the case further in endocrinological MDT for further management. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, this is the woman presenting with uh, hand pain. Uh, these are the uh, this is the uh, Darcy Palmer view of uh, right hand uh, in a uh, lady presenting with hand 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 pain. Uh, and this is the right hand. Uh, can I zoom, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, I can see. Uh, I am going systematically. Uh, Looking at the all the bones, the carpal bones appear normal. Uh, the metacarpals, yeah, uh, I can see abnormality in the involving the head of the uh, right third metacarpal bone. So there is the volume loss and uh, there is depression, depression fracture of the head of the right uh, uh, third metacarpal bone. So rest of the bones, the phalanges appear normal. The soft tissue is normal. Uh, no, no evidence of arthropathy. So in my routine practice, I would like to compare with the previous films of the of the patient uh, to see any progression or any improvement of the disease process. So this is a case of uh, possible uh, uh, possible avascular necrosis involving the head of the right third metacarpal bone. So in my routine practice, I would convey findings to the referring patient. Uh, like to uh, discuss case in. Uh, I'd like to know the cause if any if the patient is on any steroids or any medication or any history of trauma or any systemic disorder so uh, yeah and like to discuss the case in uh, in orthopedic mdt uh, for further management so it's both hands are there both it's it's a uh, had uh, ap radiograph of both hands oh, sorry sir i thought okay uh, sir. yeah uh, i can see similar finding on the right side or uh, left side also so uh, i thought this one is the right side okay uh, uh, similar bilateral symmetric changes involving the head of the bilateral third metacar metacarpal bone. Uh, yes, I suspect some systemic disorder in this case, uh, possible with uh, avascular necrosis. Uh, like to take, the, like to uh, discuss a case in orthopedic MDT for further management. 
Uh, Are we done? Yes, the time. Is okay, done. okay, okay. So, uh, if the same finding occurs in foot, what do you call that? Yeah, free bugs disease. So, what do you call this? Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's a right. You were right. Like avascular necrosis of the metaphyseal carpal heads. It's called Mocklear's disease or Dietrix disease. Two names are there: Mocklear's disease or Dietrix disease. Yeah, it you, like it is a vascular necrosis, and um, I've shown you this one headache with running nose. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, they did CT first, so we noticed something is dicey going on the pituitary fossa. So some expansion with high density. If you see that bone window, there is some enhancement. Sorry, some expansion is there. Some posterior wall is. scalloping is there here okay okay sir and uh, if you see in the sagittal so pituitary is totally dense yes sir so density is some more some sort of blood density so at ct itself you have to diagnose pituitary apoplexy apoplexy right uh, yes sir yeah and you have not gone through the sequences properly see this is t2 hypo density uh, sorry hypo intensity and t1 is hyper intensity so some blood density is there right blood yes. intensity is there yes, so you should suspect pituitary apoplexy first there is no mass effect and all you have to mention that and uh, in the dynamic contrast enhancement you see some area is enhancing see ah yes some area is enhancing so it is pituitary and you need to follow the size criteria if it is more than 10 mm so you have to give us a macro adenoma right yes sir so it's a pituitary uh, so, so it's less than 10 so it is a pituitary macro adenoma with a apoplexy okay sir. yeah so you uh, somewhat came near to the diagnosis and uh, yeah pre employment workup this you found out like this is a diaphyseal a uh, remodeling abnormality and you see uh, like sessile exostosis and this is also some kind of sessile sessile and opposite side also there and nothing in the chest so it's most likely a, a diaphyseal achalasia right okay yes sir yes. yeah you need to do the subbone uh, scan bone survey skeletal survey yes, uh, yeah yeah skeletal survey yeah and uh, of course if any recent growth and all you need to mention that like i'll be concerned about any like i will measure the cartilage thickness and also i last for the history mm -hmm. for compression and other pressure symptoms yes sir yes sir right yeah yes sir. and um, this one ataxia like in the brain itself like bone window itself you have to so, 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 compare the size of the acoustic meatus in no acoustic meatus see it's why then no like yes, ct you couldn't find out like mri is obvious but ct you have to raise the suspicion And if you go some asymmetry in the CP angle system, can you see that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So these should these all should be your review areas. So if you have a proper review areas, uh, you have to discuss them in exam. Most yes, most often the all the exam cases will be your review areas. Most of the like uh, in one course I got like everything is normal, but some dilated vein in the uh, orbit. so you have to think of like cavernous sinus cortico uh, carotico cavernous fistula then it went like that yes sir and one 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 in one um, like uh, course and all like uh, some some fat density in the ventricles like that you have to have your own uh, review areas like where do you miss frequently you have to prepare your own review areas other than the normal review areas okay okay sir okay yeah this this is obvious in clar and all like it's a, like well well you said about like no other focalizations no uh, no meningioma so if there is then bi bilateral then i will suspect uh, enough all these things it's okay good uh, like it, it it should be the way like you have to discuss in exam and uh, baby six day like you 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 nailed this case like it's a case of premature baby with uh, uh, hyaline membrane disease and and catheter also you said well and this thing like uh, you mentioned the finding of pneumoperitoneum but you have not shown any urgency like it's a pneumoperitoneum immediately refer to the surgery i immediately pick up the phone uh, and inform the pediatric uh, 
fellow on call kind of like you have to tell like that yes sir yes sir yeah and any other thing did we miss something uh, nothing sir running nose ah uh, this is the one swelling like fine i think that's it like we i i skipped a few cases in between otherwise like thank you sir thank you very much very nice cases thank you thank you thank you so much thank you and any questions any questions in the chat box yes they are saying what are the review areas for brain ct so other <laughs> any, anything other than brain is a review area <laughs> yeah, like true. like like you have to uh, even uh, like you have to see the orbits you have to see the cavernous sinus you have to see the calvarium you have to see the uh, like um, sinuses you have to see the base of skull you have to see like all these things if you are not get anything like you automatically say to buy to to buy some sometime like uh, like i am not finding any abnormality in the brain parenchyma in my usual practice i will review uh, i will go through my review areas so now i am looking at this thing now i am looking at this thing uh, the patient is having the symptoms so i would be more concentrating about this thing like that you, you you have to buy time like in exam tension it happens but you have to buy time some way right right uh, dr hari this was an excellent collection of cases um <laughs> and really really very uh, you know some cases i think many of us saw for the first time so thank you so much for your time i know how late it is in india but really yeah. thank you for your commitment <laughs> yeah not at all not at all like like something i have got from you i am returning back uh, it's nothing like uh, i i wish you all i wish you all the very best and whoever uh, doing exams the nearby in the march i wish them uh, special uh luck for them like uh and uh and pray the almighty that you all do well thank you so much thank you, best thank you a lot thank you thank you thank you guys oh, good night okay. good, good night, night good night bye 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 bye, bye. bye. bye.